Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. I know I teased you all with the short and the uh, D-Link router with the hashtags OpenWRT, then Armor and CrowdSec. This is not this video just yet. There are a couple of more kinks that I need to iron out before I release that video. But I promise you it is coming. It is what I believe to be a very comprehensive solution for sadly the router has to be pretty high tier simply because of the onboard memory but basically what it is is it's a complete solution in the sense that it is a linux based routing solution with zen armor and crowdsec inside this tiny package that maybe takes 30 40 watts in total like i said it's coming just a little further down the road not right now in today's video what we're going to be talking about is the last alternative on my list to pfsense and we're going to be going through the installation procedure the familiarity and we're going to be playing with configuration a little bit and it's going to be divided in three parts just like the previous videos were i have set it up in a virtual environment and it is efi capable I have given it 3 gigs of RAM, 2 processing cores with 32 gigs of storage, and I am using the ISO, uh, which is the latest version as of January 3rd, um, version 227 core 182, 64 bit. Let's power it on. It is FI capable, which is something that I was extremely pleasantly surprised i was not expecting it but then again it is a firewall solution that has a uh, kernel version 6 which is actually really good once we've booted the iso we are greeted with a language menu for demonstrative purposes we're going to select english and we're going to start the installation we're going to tab and select I accept this license and we're going to continue with the installation process. I already played around with an installation once. Um, I wanted to see how it goes so that I am not greeted by a surprise. It already installed but we are going to reinstall it and we're going to delete all data and we're going to select ext4 file system, the first option. The second one is essentially without a um, swap file. If your system is low on RAM, I would suggest that you keep option one, which is the EXT4 file system, and then click on OK. It's going to do its thing, and we're going to come back as soon as we're ready for the next stage. And we are back. The installation is complete. And we are ready to proceed with the setup of the firewall. So we're going to click on reboot and the virtual machine is going to restart. In your case, it could be on a, um, a physical computer or appliance. And we're going to wait for it to boot into the installation. And we're ready to continue. Keyboard mapping will be selected to whatever is most comfortable for you. For us, it's US. And the time zone is a little time consuming to um, select because you can't just type in AM and scroll down to America. So you actually have to, once you select A, it'll take you to the first African zone. And then you have to scroll down until yours. For me, America Montreal. This is where we're going to type in the host name. So for me, it's gateway with domain um, office. And for the password, this is something that you guys are going to observe just a little bit further down the road when we try to log into the GUI. For the root access, we're just going to uh, put something simple as pass123. And if you notice, it doesn't actually type it out. And now we're going to do the same thing for user admin. 
and we're going to click on OK. Now, this is where it gets kind of interesting. If you remember one of my previous videos uh, that I made on, I believe it was Endian Firewall that had uh, different colored zones. It had green, red, orange, and blue. To my amazement, uh, IP Fire has done the exact same thing where they have red, green, orange, and blue signifying the following. Red is wide area network, green is local area network, orange is demilitarized zone, and blue is wireless local area network. In this scenario, because we only have two NICs attached, it's only asking us to configure two zones, green and red. First, let's select a uh, network configuration type. If you have more than two NICs, please feel free to select whatever is applicable for you. Uh, but for me, it's only green plus red. Drivers and card assignments. This is where you can uh, manually set which zone applies to which port on um on a network card in my case um we're going to select green and it is with 2c5f and red is with 2c69 and we're going to click on done the best way to do it is if you know by heart which port and on what two octates then you you can uh on top of your head just select what it is and it's fairly clear um i because i've already done this uh installation once it's familiar to me that 5f is the one that i've assigned for the green interface and 69 is the one that i've assigned for the red interface and we're going to click on done and the last thing we're going to do is we're going to add do the uh address settings we're going to select um, the green one first because it is the simplest one and the network math is already pre-configured for us but for the IP address we're going just going to do nice and simple 192.168.1.1 and we're going to click on OK. Now we're going to select the red zone and we're going to select static DHCP or PPP dial-up. Something that I've noticed Hold on just a second, let me fix my monitors. Here we are. So when, just before we finish the setup, something that I wanted to show you guys when it comes to the proper configuration of the different zones. Whenever you're gonna be configuring your red zone, it's important to notice um, what type of, conf of um, connection you have. If it's PPPoE, DHCP, or PPPoE via VLAN or something in particular. Because if you are experienced with PFSense and you kind of know that you create a VLAN and you set a parent interface and then you create your PPPoE connection with credentials and then you set the VLAN as a parent interface, kind of staggering them one on top of the other, that does not exist in IP Fire per se. It's it's a pre-configured kind of like a parent interface where it either it it either works pre-configured or it doesn't work in in that same sense as PFSense. So there are multiple types of um, interface type. So PPPoE is your regular point-to-point over ethernet but it doesn't have vlan point-to-point -point tunneling protocol is as you know it um in its own native uh, operative state pp xxx over atm bridge is for usb modems vdsl is the pppoe protocol over a vlan so for canadians who have bell fiber uh, connectivity vdsl is the option that you would be choosing if you want to set up ip fire in your home environment and then modem just ppp via modem is if you have uh, a wireless modem whether it's 3g 4g 
and then cereal it's it's cereal you know there's there's no explanation for cereal and when we're returning into our setup something that i've kind of noticed is that i don't really have the option to select vdsl i don't know why that is uh maybe there's a further setup that needs to be done inside of the gui which i haven't really observed yet but it would be nice because it is given in the documentation as a direct method of operation for the red interface so vdsl in my opinion should be an option whenever you're setting up the ip interface for for the red inter sorry the ip address for the red interface but it is what it is in in my case i'm gonna set it to dhcp it will work because it's in a virtual environment however uh, once i get access to the gui i'm going to walk through with you guys on how to set it up for uh, vdsl operation which is going to give you access to pppoe over vlan dhcp is selected my host name is selected we're not going to be forcing an mtu because my network is on 1500 mtu right now and we're going to click on ok once both interfaces or all interfaces for you have been uh, configured we're going to click on whoops sorry not ok we're going to click on done and we're going to tab out again and we're going to click on done a second time it's going to ask us in the next step if you want to configure a DHCP server, which it is a good idea to do it. So go ahead and enable it with your um, given details. For me, I'm just going to set it up from 192.168.1.50 to 1.100. And I'm not going to set up a D, uh, secondary DNS. We're going to leave the rest of the stuff at default. And that's it. Setup is complete. Thank you for joining me in this one. It was a quick and dirty video on installing IP Fire. I'm going to try and get all the videos out tonight, but I will stagger them over two to three days when it comes to uh, YouTube uploads. I'll see you guys in the next one.